No bigger story in the NCAA tournament so far than Oral Roberts and the Golden Eagles head coach Paul Mills joining the Rich Eisen Show right now. Coach Dan Helley here, so happy to have you on. I cannot tell you how crazy it was to see you guys do what you did to get to the Sweet 16, just the second 15 seed ever to make it this far in the tournament. And apparently, it's not a big surprise to you. You've been telling your guys all season long you're going to do this, right? Well, Dan, one, thank you uh, for having me on. Uh, two, I, I think that, you know, any time that you're competitive and you believe in the people that you have, um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to have that mentality and instill that confidence and not phony confidence. But I believe that our players had put in the work. Um, I, I believe that that we were competitive. I mean, if you go look, we played the third toughest non-conference schedule in the country uh all five teams that we played in the non-conference made the ncaa tournament now we didn't win any of those games lost by five to oklahoma state at osu lost by five at wichita state we were up 12 on arkansas in the second half ended up losing that one and so we knew that if we tightened up some areas on some really good teams that these are two possessions that we need to make up. And I just felt over the course of time, the course of the year, that we would make those corrections, and to our guys' credit, uh, we've done that. Yeah, I would say so. I'm just looking at your uh, your Twitter page right now, Coach Mills, and I think this Sweet 16 run deserves verification. We're going to have to contact Twitter, <laughs> get that blue check mark for you. Uh, I'm sure that will be coming down the pipe at any moment, right? Has to. Uh, I have no, yeah, I didn't even know about verification. I have two teenage daughters, and uh, when I took the job here, uh, they said your job's to get verified, not post <laughs> O R U. And uh, <laughs> and so I didn't even know what that meant. But uh, honest to goodness, it's uh, I, I don't care anything about it. <laughs> well, I, it's funny you say that about the the, the teenage daughters. I have uh, a, a teenage son and daughter, thirteen and fourteen, and um, yeah, they get they get quite a kick out of that. They're like, Dad, that yeah, doesn't make any yeah, sense. They, I don't. They, that that that's important to uh, to teenage kids. What what has that been like for them to watch this run for you guys? Well, it's it's great. Uh, I mean, my, my kids have always been all in on wherever we were uh they do have different level of shrills when other people shoot free throws uh so so they can change (laughs) octave levels based upon your free throw percentage if you're bad they'll go a little lower uh if you're really good those shrills will get really higher so they've they've been all in what's been tough is you can't even touch them right you can't even hug your wife you can't hug your children um after moments like ohio state and, and and uh, Florida last night. And so from that context, it's just you got to wave to them. So uh, they're old enough to understand it. Um, I feel bad for some of our other coaches who have, you know, four-year-olds and two-year-olds. And, and they they want dad to lose uh, <laughs> for some of our assistant coaches. So they want to see him and get him back home. But uh, that, that, that's been tough, obviously, not being able to share those moments with your family. How do you keep your guys from from getting too high? I mean, you win that that first round game against second seeded Ohio State, and then you come back against Florida from you know an eleven point deficit in the second half. What does it say about these troops that you just have them believing? Well, one, if if you get too high, you're going to lose, and and so if you like losing, uh, go ahead and. Uh, pay attention to all the hype and read the social media and return all the text messages. Uh, If you don't like losing, uh, then get focused in on what's important. And there'll be a time to return all these text messages, uh, deal with all of these other issues. Uh, We're off actually today and we'll be off tomorrow um, in order to have these guys rest because we don't play until Saturday evening. But uh, I mean, you, you, you have to turn the page pretty quickly. I mean, I heard a, a, a old football coach say one time, uh, you're a peacock one day and then you're a feather duster tomorrow. <laughs> and you realize just, one, how quickly this thing can change if you don't lock in on your responsibilities. And we have a very mature group, and they've been able to do that. 
You're a peacock one day and a feather duster the next. Man, I like that. That is that is penthouse to outhouse in a hurry. Uh, Dan Helley on the Rich Eisen Show filling in with Paul Mills, the head coach at Oral Roberts. It is the Cinderella story of the NCAA tournament this year. What an amazing run it has been for the Golden Eagles. They beat Ohio State. Then they beat Florida, just the second 15 seed to ever make it to the Sweet 16. In the Florida game, you guys had that intentional foul. There were about three minutes to go. Um, kind of a risky move. Uh, the analytics said that it, it was a smart move. Was that was that your idea? You guys were down one, I believe, at that point. Was that your idea, or do we need to give credit to a, to a really smart assistant for that one? Yeah, it was actually our graduate assistant, Ian Lehman. And Ian was at uh, Indiana, and uh, he and, and Sam Patterson, one of my assistant coaches, um, said, hey, 15 is 6 for 12. And I looked over and I said, in the SEC or on the year? And they said, on the year. And I said, we're fouling him. And so credit to, to Ian Lehman and Coach Patterson uh, for, for, for bringing that up. But we were at the free throw line shooting. Max was to, to cut a three-point deficit to one, and we weren't able to get stops. And so um, we knew a play call that, that they were about to run, and we knew that that, that guy um, – was going to touch it and uh fortunately it worked out for us so explain to me the situation with with dancing on campus because i'm assuming some people are are dancing a little bit lately the way things have been going for you yeah honestly don't know i i mean i doubt there and i've heard people say there's a prohibition against dancing uh the the president asked me to dance after we went to the conference tournament, so surely that's not a policy. Uh, <laughs> the president is encouraging it, uh, but I, I I do like the whole idea. It's not as if you could ever stop kids from dancing. I don't even think that's uh, possible. I know Baylor uh, when I was there. I think they had a, a policy uh, way back in the 1980s. I'm sure at some point a number of the, uh, Christian universities may have had certain things in place that that they realize now. Uh, may not be the case that, that you can kind of put limits on people. But uh, I, I, it was glad to see we had, we had a number of people in the Maybe Center where we play. And it wasn't socially distanced, uh, but but it's, it's good to see kind of people lose their mind for a little bit because over the course of the past year, obviously, we, everybody has done their best to stay away. And and to have an event that could just kind of bring people together for even just a brief moment uh, it, it is pretty cool. Dan Helley filling in on the Rich Eisen Show, talking to Paul Mills, head coach of Oral Roberts. It is by far, you know, the best story of the NCAA tournament so far, and there are a lot of great ones out there right now. Coach, you talked about keeping the kids off social media. We don't need to answer all the text messages. Is that even possible? And is that something you really say to them? Hey, let's just put the phones down for a while. Um, one, it is possible. I mean, it, it isn't as if you can't do it. Um, two, uh, the, there's a time and a place for it, right? Um, I mean, I, as I told them, talk to your mom, talk to your dad, uh, talk to your girlfriend. Um, but, I mean, the, nobody's going to think you're rude because you're focused in on your responsibility. And, and, and I do think that um, probably your more mature players uh, know how to handle that kind of thing, and, and, and maybe some younger guys don't. But I, I can assure you that, that what our guys enjoy is winning and being together. And in order for those things to happen, you do have to avoid distractions. You talked about some of your leaders, Max Asmus and Kevin O'Banner, have been absolute stallions for you in this tournament. I, I don't know that I've seen two guys have back-to-back games as good as they've had in, in, in a long time. Um, how much do you lean on, the, on these two? Well, they're the best duo in the country scoring-wise. Max is obviously the leading scorer in the country. And then when you look at Kevin and his contributions, there's no other team who has a duo um, like we do. And, and people know that, right? Um, and, and so we, it, it's one thing to perform when you're not a focus of a defense. It's a different element to do it when you are. But they're, they're also the two best in the country, in my mind, in middle pick and roll. And so uh, we put those guys in a ton of different middle pick and roll situations. And Max is making the right read. Kevin is making the right read. 
and and they're doing a phenomenal job of just this is actually the best play. We talk a lot about we're not here to get a good shot. We're here to get a great shot. And and, and they understand what their strengths are and do terrific work in middle pick and roll, especially with all of the coverages that we've seen through the course of the year because and we've, we've seen it all from trapping to switching. Uh, uh, regardless of what it is, we've kind of seen all the elements and, and they've, they've handled all this stuff really well. They've been fantastic. What, what are you doing for the next couple of days? Obviously, you're, you're, pra- you're practicing, you're hanging out, but during the day when you're not on the practice floor, what are you guys doing as a team? How much time do these players get on their own? Are they hanging out in the room? Because you're not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. unfortunately, we haven't breathed any Indianapolis air. You're just breathing air conditioning the whole time. Uh, so we're trying to find a way to get a kickball game in uh, at a baseball <laughs> field that they're uh, allowing us to, to get across. So uh, i got to make sure I stretch. I don't want to pull a hamstring or anything. You're going to play um, in the game? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we'll probably do staff versus players. Uh, the good thing is I've got about 100 graduate assistants and student managers, so we can outnumber them by quite a bit and uh, make sure everybody's in the field. Uh, we'll lose it athletically, but uh, we're just trying to breathe fresh air right now. And, and the reality is is our guys have schoolwork to do, and they've got a responsibility there. And so uh, they've got tutoring via Zoom. They've got classes via Zoom. And, and so they have responsibilities uh, as a student as well. And then you're COVID testing every day. Uh, you're watching film. And so uh, we, we, we keep them busy. We don't let them just get to their own. But uh, there, there is about a two-hour period where they're playing a number of card games and, and 2K on PS5. Uh, so, so there is a break. You brought up school. I almost forgot that they had to take classes. I, I can't yeah, imagine you got, playing you the work, tournament. You've got to study for a athlete. final. Yes. Yeah, that's wild. So you guys have you have Arkansas coming up next. You played them before, right, in December? Played them in December. And and they Ace Miss had an uncharacteristic game for him, just 11 points. What, what did you learn uh, from playing the Razorbacks in that game? One, we're a different team than, than what we were. Um, we got up 12 um, at, at, at the half, or we were up 10 at the half, got up 12 early. And and then they basically turned up their offensive rebound and transition game, and we didn't do well. The one thing that did happen that game was um, Max, Max, we would kind of, one of our other players, we would kind of move them both on the ball and off the ball. Um, whereas the, we're way different now than what we were then simply because the ball is in Max's hand about 99.99% of the time now. And so uh, and so from that, I just think the decision-making since that course of the game, we, we've become a different team. And it's obviously played out really well for us. I'm looking at your uh, schedule here, and you had – you had a, what, one, two, three, three games canceled? A couple postponed? Um, we had one against, uh, we had one conference game uh, that was scheduled, and then we had one other non conference game um, that got delayed for a week. So we literally only had one game that we had to miss all year on account of COVID. So you played nearly a full schedule, which is not the yeah, case we, for a lot of these teams. We didn't have any issues with COVID this year, our team. So we, we've been very fortunate. Well, that that is that's outstanding, and I guess you're very fortunate now too because when you punch your name into Google, one of the first things that pops up is your quote about being able to do laundry now. <laughs> is, 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 that, sure is that something you got? Whatever. Have you done the laundry yet? Uh, you know what? They came by, so we got back. I don't know midnight last night, and about one o'clock, uh, they gave us a bag, and then they said, "Hey, it has to be out at nine. And by one. I had the bag full and was sitting outside my door, and somebody was kind enough to come grab it. They came by last night and just grabbed our laundry. So uh, I think they said it'd be ready at some time around 2 o'clock today, and and that is a good thing um, because literally out of clothes. <laughs> well, you got to be careful during that kickball game, right? You, you can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, they told us, hey, pack for seven to ten days, and then there'll be laundry being able to do so. And we literally, we got here last Saturday, so today's Monday. So I packed for right around that number. So it, it's 
it's good now to uh, to get, hey, everything's fresh and clean. Here we go. We can start right back over. I love it. I love it. You're playing with house money right now, Paul, obviously. Do you allow well, – I, I promise you we don't think that way. Uh, do you allow yourself to look ahead – at all to 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 what what could be next if you advance? Um, to Baylor Villanova. Yep. I only know that because I talked to Scott Drew this morning, and he's like, you know, we're on the same side of the bracket. <laughs> and I was like, I had no idea. Uh, I honestly didn't know who we were supposed to play after this one. And I was like, who are we playing next? And they were the Texas Tech uh, Arkansas winner. And I was like, oh okay. Uh, but uh, honest to goodness, I had no idea. I, I, I did vaguely know that, that Baylor was in the South, but it's not anything that you ever paid attention to. So, uh, But, no, uh, we, I, I can assure you all our attention will, uh, will be on Arkansas. This is going to change the life of everybody involved with, with Oral Roberts' basketball program, but, but perhaps nobody more than you down the road. Is that something that's crept into your mind? In what context? Well, there's just there do- opportunities, doors open. When you guys do what you've done, you know, Andy Enfield, the last coach to do that at Florida Gulf Coast, is is you know is is now at USC. But just in general, way well, it could be book deals, it could be anything. This is a big, big deal. Is that it? Something when, as you're sitting around and you're doing your laundry that you allow to creep into your head? <laughs> well, I, I will say this: my only desire ever. Um, I love the movie Hoosiers. Right, I've seen it well over a thousand times. Um, and, and all I wanted to do was be a really good high school coach because I just love the high school environment. I love that investment. What I realized in my six years of coaching high school was, man, these guys, not that you expect them to love it as much as you, but I'd have one or two guys who loved it as much as me. So when I went to college, I was like, all right, you're going to be around guys who enjoy it. And that's what I'm able to do. And so from that context, I mean, I, I'm doing exactly what I'm called to do. And that is investing in the lives of these 18 to 22 year olds at a place that I believe in, in the mission of, of investing in young men and, and can do it in a way. And so, I mean, I wake up every single day excited uh, not only to recruit for ORU, but to invest in our players here. So uh, I, I, I'm glad that our players get this experience, and, and I hope it's even more. I mean, when I took the job, honest to goodness, um, I talked about being in Final Fours, and you've seen it with Gonzaga, you've seen it with Butler, you've seen it with Loyola Chicago, you've seen it with George Mason, um, you've seen it with VCU, you've seen it with Wichita State. You've seen a number of mid-majors do that. And I think those are the things that make college basketball so exciting. And I honestly believe we can do it here at ORU. And why not Oral Roberts? What a run it has been so far. Hey, Coach, I really appreciate the time. We kept you a little longer than I expected. Uh, the entire nation, all 49 states besides Arkansas, I think are rooting for you guys. So, <laughs> Well, good well lu- thanks, Dan. Good luck coming up. Uh, again, appreciate the time. Glad you're going to have some clean laundry. And please be careful. Do not pull a hamstring in that kickball game. Yeah, Leave it to I the agree. young grad assistants. I agree, yeah. <laughs> so if I'm limping on a Saturday night, you'll know why. You're the man. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. That's Paul Mills from Oral Roberts University getting ready to play Arkansas coming up here in a few days. A 15 seed, just the second ever in the Sweet 16. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.